You know, as we mentioned in the bio, there's a whole lot we can talk about, but anybody who names their single fuckability <laughs> is, is really making... Is, <laughs> is a head case. Yeah, I know, I know. But well, it's not even an offensive song in any way, shape, or form. It's not the tiniest bit offensive. And um, I never thought anybody would, would be worried, actually, about a song having a title with a curse in it anymore. But, uh, yeah, they, they found it kind of difficult at right. radio, frankly. <laughs> but it's a great song. Yeah. Was that a surprise to you that radio kind of went, wait a minute? Yeah. Really? Imagine, I know, I know, I know. I should, but how laid I, back I really are they should, here? I should know better, but uh, I thought they would call it F-ability and, and, mm. and just play it Or anyway make love-ability. Yeah. Or I'll tell you whatever you want to hear tonight and change yeah. it tomorrow-ability. I, I, yeah. 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 I mean, I, I, I should have just called it One Step Forward, which is the <laughs> line that's mostly in the song. I don't know what I was thinking. Thank but it's, a great, it's great music, though. Great, well, great song. And imagine as an artist, it's, it's, it must be really interesting to be able to go back and forth, to, to act and to be that, but then to find another way to kind of release the energy that you have inside. W when you're doing one, are you thinking about the other? No, I absolutely can't. Have to have to um, totally separate them. I think otherwise I wouldn't do either well. Um, so, I mean, it's completely different. Um, I think acting is like, it's like pretending. It's like, you know, what you did when you were small. It's like, you know, play acting. Right. So you get to sort of live out these different things without any real life consequences for your actions. It's fantastic and you get paid. But um, music is um, what I need to do, I suppose. I write the songs myself uh, with my husband, mm -hmm. with my partner in music and life and yeah, many, many crimes probably. <laughs> but, um, Care to share? So, no. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a personal expression, I right. suppose, of what I feel and what I see. And is it a different vulnerability? Because when you do get on set and you play, you know, a queen, you, 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 like you said, you get to pretend. But success or fail isn't wholly on your shoulders. Exactly. It's much more collaborative yeah. effort. Whereas singing the songs, they're, um, I've written them, I'm singing them, and I'm exposing myself, certainly my feelings, and, then it, and it is about whether you're, whether you're good or not. I think you can be a really good actor in a not very good film. If you're a really good singer, then you, you are a really good singer or you aren't, you right. know, it's just, it stands. I think for a lot of people, you know, the commitments would have been the moment where they first kind of really, paid, certainly the rest of the world, saw, saw what was going on with you. What did it, at the time, were you aware of everything that was happening? Um, no conception that it would be such a popular um, film, but it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was, you know, as it seemed. It was the first time I'd ever done any acting. The, um, the director, Alan Parker, hadn't found what he wanted within the acting uh, fraternity, so he started looking just open calling. And I was singing then uh, with my band and just went in to see it and then, yeah, got the job and made some lifelong friends and, and had a really good, good time. You were an early incarnation of Hot House Flowers, right? That's very, very true, yeah. Yeah. What was, I mean, because again, you, you get to be a part of things at, at the very beginning of their development. Yeah. Do you get to develop along with it? Because you opened for 10,000 Maniacs. You had some big shows in your career. Uh, I opened for 10,000 Maniacs, actually, with the, the Black Velvet Band. With your husband? Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah, we toured with them. I love that band. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And, um, yeah, I guess I've been making music for more than 20 years now, so, and, and still somehow finding a way to do it. Um, it changes, maybe, as you go along. And, and now the way I do it is I, I run my own little record label and mm -hmm. release, the, um, release everything myself, which is... Fantastic in that you have total control over what you do. Nobody's trying to say to you, you know, where's the hit single, where's the hit single? Um, but, then, then, but, but except maybe you would have to say to yourself, where's the hit single? Because when you run the business, you require a different level of success, don't you? Well, possibly if, 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 it was, if there was somebody else there, I mightn't have called the song Fuckability. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but S somebody it's good, but then you, you, you have to impose your own deadlines and you have to try and work at things that are maybe, like the best thing I do, I think, is probably sing mm -hmm. and write those songs. And telling other people about it is, is more difficult for me. I'm not a natural uh, in, in that kind of area. So when you, but when, you can do it for You're doing it for me, so that's well, great. Know, when, we, um, when you start off as a singer and you, and you just take an open call to be an actor and you, you get into the commitments, that's, that's one thing. But then to step into the tutors and to step into a completely different world where you're playing a, a person that was real and you're doing, uh, you know, and you're doing the queen, which has got to be fun. Yeah. Uh, what's, is there a different kind of pressure for you when you walk into that world? Um, I have done a few other things before mm -hmm. where I was uh, representing somebody who was actually alive, so that was even more difficult, I think, because they were living and I had a huge responsibility to tell their story. In terms of the Tudors and Catherine of Aragon, well, that's just, 
was just fantastic. I had a Spanish accent, so immediately I'm not myself. Mm -hmm. And get to wear these fantastic frocks and crown jewels. I mean, who doesn't want to be swanning around the place like that, frankly? Were you ever tempted to leave the set in costume and go to the pub? <laughs> because in Ireland it would play great. It, so, yeah, yeah. It, it would be totally possible. No, but I was told that I brought my queenly attitude home a few times. Oh. And that, if, and that if, I, <laughs> if I wanted that kind of service, I needed to go back to work. So <laughs> I was obviously ordering people around. But uh, no, it was, it was great. It was really good fun. The, most, um, the funniest thing about it, I think, was that I, I, after series one, mm -hmm. I was only supposed to be in that. And then I, um, I became pregnant. Um, totally out of the blue. I mean, well. In real life. That, yeah, in real life, yeah, yeah sorry. The queen and, and obviously couldn't. not totally out of It wasn't an immaculate conception or anything. Right. But. Um, so this wasn't. So you, you could actually trace it back and say, this is possible. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> but um, they, then they said, we'd love to have you back in series two. And I said, well, that's fine, but I, I'm pregnant. So. But they, 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 they were fine and they wanted to work around it. But I'm convinced that it was all that praying and, and crying for a boy child in series one that just. <laughs> Got me, but then of course, in the end of that, I'm, are you suggesting I'm that dying. God didn't know the Tudors wasn't real? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm, I'm suggesting that I was acting so well that I was <laughs> transcending the. Um, but then I had to die, of course, and, yeah. and, and he's leaving me because I, I'm barren and everything. So I, I'm on my deathbed. I'm eight months pregnant. They had to make me a special bed with a big hole in it and fake blankets and legs across the top. And the, and the entire crew were standing around, hanging themselves, laughing <laughs> as I'm dying for my thing. It was, yeah, probably the best acting I ever did. <laughs> nice. Ready to play 220? Uh, a whole bunch of rapid fire questions. Half of them doesn't matter what you say. The other half will find the true measure of your soul. Are you prepared? I'm not sure that you'd find the true measure of my soul that way, Roll but I will animation. certainly <laughs> give it a go. <laughs> Okay. What's cooler, the Ten Commandments or the eleven members of the commitments? Obviously, the eleven members. That's the right answer, by the way. Um, okay, now say something incredibly offensive in Irish and Gaelic, but make it sound beautiful and poetic. <laughs> no, I couldn't. I think you could. There's no one around. Just oh, us. No. no, I just couldn't. I, it would be too offensive, and I'd know I said it, so I'd feel bad. <laughs> Does anybody here speak Irish? Nobody. See, they wouldn't even no, know. No, no, but I do. I do. Oh, okay, I feel fair terrible. Uh, you, have several, uh, you have several boys. What's the perfect name for a daughter? Elva. Elva's a nice name. Yeah. Where'd you get that? Uh, I, I just met someone recently, a really lovely person called Elva. There you go. Um, best world leader of our time? I'd have to say Barack. Of our time. He's the best world leader? I think he's given it a shot. I, I'm f up for everything he does at the moment. All right. So two people then in history that you'd like to have dinner with. Oh, um, Isadora Duncan and Sarah Bernhardt. Sarah Bernhardt, nice. Mm. Um, what's the uh, best movie you've seen in the past year? Um, I liked Juno a lot. It's a great film. Beautiful film. It's a great film. Really, really beautiful. Ellen Page was fantastic in that Absolutely movie. Absolutely gorgeous, yeah. Who's your favorite female singer? Patti Smith. Well done. <laughs> there couldn't be another answer. Is that answer. the right answer, That's too? the right answer. Yeah, well, for me yeah, it is, anyway. Yeah. Uh, what's your guilty pleasure? Really crap television. For example? Um, oh, God, it's the worst thing I've ever seen. I, s I suppose a really bad soap opera, maybe. You want to be in one of those? No. Oh, just no. for fun? No, no, it's a kind of, it's a, kind of a, um, a sort of a thing just to actually, you would actually watch just to kind of shut down your brain. Mm -hmm. Just so you don't have to, yeah, do any real thinking. Spandex bike shorts or whalebone corsets? I'm sorry? Spandex bicycle shorts or whalebone corsets? Oh, whalebone corsets. Anytime. Who do you admire the most? I have huge admiration for my husband, Kieran Kennedy, who um, puts up with me. <laughs> And, and uh, yeah, patiently and loves me. Do you think the Antichrist will come in the form of a televangelist, a rock star, or a politician? Oh, I'd say televangelist. There you go. Yeah. Maria Doyle Kennedy, everybody. The Tudor Season 3, Wednesday, September the 30th, is going to premiere on CBC. We'll be right back.